Dom, my husband, has never painted a thing in his life other than our house. So we thought it would be fun and interesting if he tried one of my tutorials. In this video, you will see him paint a little wren in watercolour. And he ended up teaching me something that I can use when I teach others to paint. The idea of Dom painting came from our Discord group. They thought it would be great fun to see him do a painting, and so did I. As I said, he's never painted before, so before he painted the wren that I'll show you in this video, he had a trial run with one of my beginner tutorials. I stretched some paper for him and he set himself up here in the studio with his iPad, his headphones and our little Leo. And he worked his way through one of my online tutorials all by himself. I left him to it. I continued to do some work in the studio. And when he was finished, he was really happy with his painting. The next day, we painted something more challenging together. I chose a little fairy wren that I've painted before, and I tried to simplify it as much as I could. Now, before I show you how he went, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. You've probably heard of Skillshare because it's the largest online learning community for creative people. And I've been teaching watercolor classes there for eight years. One of my classes is all about mastering the wet on wet technique. In this class, you'll learn lots of things, including how to blend colors on the paper, how to create texture, and how to add dimension while you paint a sleepy koala in watercolor. Skillshare has a wide range of topics from illustration, graphic design, and photography to music, marketing, and productivity. You'll also find other art-related classes you can join, such as drawing, using Adobe Illustrator, and finding your style. It also has many creative career-focused classes. So if you're wanting to build a creative career, Skillshare has classes in freelancing, marketing, social media, user design, productivity, and many more. The classes on Skillshare have a learn by doing approach where you can create and share a project after completing a class, which is great because you can put the skills that you're learning into practice and then share them with others. All of the classes are on demand, so you can learn at your own pace in your own time. Whether you want to learn the basics of watercolor painting or learn how to market your own business, Skillshare has classes to take you to the next level. If you've never used Skillshare and you'd like to try it, I'm happy to let you know that you can access all my classes and many more for free. The first 500 people to click the link can get one month free trial of Skillshare. The link is in the description below. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, now let me show you how Dom went when he painted with me. I stretched two pieces of Saunders Waterford watercolor paper for us. I wanted to work on the same paper so that there would be some consistency for him. That's my painting on the left and Dom's is on the right. I started by wetting the paper first and I told him that we'd paint in the front section of the wren wet on wet. I demonstrated while he watched and then he tried it on his painting. I told him that my attention was on the front edge of the bird. I wanted to paint that edge in carefully because I was forming the shape of the bird with the brush. I wasn't concerned about what was happening with the other side of my paintbrush. The paint would creep over the wet paper and that's what I wanted it to do. It would take care of itself. And then it was Dom's turn. He wet the paper like I showed him and then he picked up some of the grey paint and he started to paint tentatively at first but he listened to me and he paid attention to painting in that front edge it was really good for me to see him paint for the first time because it made me see what a beginner would go through on their first painting he held the paintbrush awkwardly that's something that is intuitive for me but for a beginner this brush in your hand is a strange, awkward object that you have to try and manoeuvre carefully over the paper. And you can see he's trying to be really careful with that brush.
The next section of the wren, we worked wet on wet again. I showed him how to wet the paper first. I painted on the main colour of the feathers on the head, wet on wet. And then I used a smaller brush and some burnt sienna to paint the feathers around the eye. This time I used pigment that wasn't as diluted as the first colour. I placed it on the paper, then I washed my brush out and I showed him how to push the pigment where I needed it to sit. I told him to paint carefully around the edge of the eye to make sure the shape of that's right. So here I've got no paint on my brush, all I'm doing is using that brush to push the pigment where I need it to sit. And then it was Dom's turn. I told him to paint the water on carefully because the paint will go wherever the water sits. I told him to pull the water down into the wing area so that he wouldn't get a hard paint edge forming where the top of the wing starts. Then when the paper was wet, I told him to get down lower just to make sure that it was covered well with no dry patches anywhere. Then he started to paint. And again, he was tentative to begin with. He was unsure of himself. Then we could see that the paint mixture that he was using was a bit too pale. So we mixed a bit more pigment into it to make it darker. You can see Dom's lack of confidence in the way he was moving his brush in comparison to the way I was painting. When you've been painting for many years, the brush just becomes an extension of your hand. And it's easy to forget how beginner painters often struggle with brush control. So it was good for me to see this. He used the smaller brush quite well. He painted carefully around the eye with the thicker pigment. Then he washed the brush out and used it to spread that pigment out the way I had done. Here on the bottom end of the wren, I wanted soft, fluffy paint edges to resemble the softness of the feathers. So again, I worked on wet paper. I told Dom to extend the water past the edges of the area where we'll be painting so that the paint won't drift all the way to the edge of the water. When I put the paint on the paper, I want to leave the white of the paper showing in places because these are white feathers. We talked about how the paint creates a circular shape when you lift it from the wet paper. So I told him to try and paint quick strokes and paint back towards the body. So when the paintbrush lifted from the surface of the paper, those circular marks would be on the body of the bird and not on the edges of the feathers. If you're not sure what I mean here, when you paint strokes on wet paper, when you lift the brush from the paper, the paint is released and forms a circular shape. I didn't want that circular shape to be on the outer edge of the feather. It'd be better if that shape was on the bird so that we could blend them together with the brush. So here I'm using a damp brush just to soften those paint edges on the bird a bit more. Then Dom wet the paper the way I showed him and he started to paint. He was off to a good start. He allowed the paint to bleed over the paper. But then his strokes started to look a little stiff and awkward. Dom was a builder and he's used to things being straight, perpendicular and plumb. And I think that way of thinking showed in the way that he painted. The marks that he made with the brush were a little stiff and evenly spaced. So I told him to try to relax and make the marks look more random looking. He tried to blend the marks together with his brush. I told him to drop a bit more paint onto the paper and then move that around a bit. Thankfully, when you work on wet paper, the paint might look a little awkward or patchy, but it often sorts itself out as it dries. We did a bit more wet on wet work and then we painted the tail feathers on dry paper. 
When I painted the feather, my hand was resting on the table. It was anchored. I started on the tip of the brush and I flattened the bristles and used the belly of the brush. Dom, on the other hand, didn't anchor his hand on the table. He held it up in the air and even used his other hand at one point to steady his painting hand. He flattened the brush and used the belly at one stage, which was good, but it was the unsupported hand that made painting slightly difficult for him. We painted one side of each of the flight feathers wet on dry. We're using the same brush here, but Dom's paint colour is slightly different to mine. Again, I had my hand anchored on the paper. My little finger is resting on the paper to steady my hand, but I had to keep reminding Dom to rest his hand on the paper to steady it. I asked him when he had finished the painting, which technique did he find easier, wet on wet or wet on dry? And he said that they both required a learning curve, so he didn't find one technique easier than the other. We did a bit more work on the wing and we painted in the eye and the beak. Then I told him that we needed to make more of a distinction between the neck feathers, which are white, and the body feathers, which are brown. So we wet the body with some water and then we painted some of the brown onto the body to give us more of a solid edge where the neck feathers finish and the body feathers start. But Dom's edge ended up looking a bit stiffer than mine when he'd finished. I added some definition to the tail feathers by painting some fine lines wet on dry. When I do this, I use the tip of a small brush. I hold it vertically so that the handle of the brush is perpendicular to the surface of the paper and I try to move my whole arm, not just my wrist. I demonstrated that for Dom while he watched and then he had a go. Okay, let's see how he does. Now straight away I can see that he's not holding the brush perpendicular to the paper. He's holding it similar to the way that you would hold a pen to write. He's also not grounding his hand on the paper. He's holding it up in the air and he's trying to support it with his other hand. When he paints, he's moving his whole arm, which is good. That's what I told him to do. He's keeping his wrist steady. But again, you can see that the brush isn't perpendicular to the paper. It's on more of an angle. And I find holding it that way as though it's a pen restricts the movement of the bristles. He's using the belly of the brush rather than the tip. And you can see he's struggling with that a little bit. He's not resting his hand on the paper here either. We finished everything else and we also did a bit of repair work on the front chest area of Dom's wren. He wasn't happy with it so I showed him how to paint a bit of gouache there to fix it. And now we're painting on a shadow area on the back of the wren. We painted wet on wet there and now we switched to the liner brush to pull some of that paint back into the dry area to create a little jagged edge. And he's doing better here because he's holding the brush perpendicular to the paper. And now he's going to come across onto my painting for some reason. So that was our little wren painting session. And here are the finished paintings. Can you guess which one is Dom's? I think he did really well and I was quite surprised. Even though I simplified the wren, it was a difficult subject for someone who has never painted before. Watching him paint made me realise just how important brush control is because the main problem that I noticed was his awkwardness with the brush, the way he held it and the way he used it. He moved his hand into some strange positions that hindered the movement of the brush. And as you saw, he also held his hand up in the air so it wasn't being supported. That's fine if you're painting a landscape and some loose shapes, or if you're painting a background and you want free movement with your hand and brush, but when you're painting something more precise like this, it helps if your hand is grounded or supported on the paper. That's what I find anyway. When I was a sign writer back in my 20s, I used a marl stick to support and steady my hand as I painted. 
So watching his awkwardness made me realize that I need to make some tutorials that focus on building the skills needed for brush control, which I will do as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Yeah? <clears throat> Where you can create it. And I was doing so well. I did it. He moved his hand into some strange positions. Do you remember doing that? Don't what you? strange positions? Do you remember doing that? <laughs> Do you? Yes.